Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Black Talon Episode 6, Returned. This is the most beautifully violent episode released in the realms of Sigmar, so I strongly recommend coming along for the adventure. I'll be pausing intermittently to break down the episode, so if you want to watch the episode in its entirety and without lore interruptions, please go to Warhammer TV. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and Hawkins and & Company. Mastermind Models and Minis is an insanely talented paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama who do commissions, so if your pile of shame is weighing you down, be sure to check them out in the description below and be sure to tell them that we sent you. Hawkins & Company is a veteran-owned leather-making firm using the best American-made materials to create the finest handmade wallets available. Coming in classic bifold trucker and biker builds with a variety of patterns and insignias, all made from leather from one of America's last tanneries. So if your wallet is starting to show its age, buy a rugged, beautiful, American-made piece of art from Hawkins & Company and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off. of war. They will land in fertile soil and bring forth suffering. Silence in the streets. Peace so deep I can hear the plague breathing as it grows. Seeds are sown. You have served well. My service is to the truth, and my payment was to be vengeance. And that you shall have.
one! The Sylvaneth. Honor the binding of our loops. We are witness to a Dawnbringer crusade sent out by the great city of Hammerhall to set up a new settlement. As I mentioned in my Hammer and Bolter episode Undercity, which you should absolutely check out, Hammerhall is one of the most powerful and populous cities in the mortal realm since it straddles one of the biggest realm gates, a portal between worlds. This particular gate bridges the realm of life Gyron with the realm of fire Aichi. Gyron provides endless food and Akshi endless industry. Leveraging these twin powers, Hammerhall boasts the largest population of the forces of order and therefore the largest target for the forces of chaos. This is displayed in the variety of forces making up the Dawnbringer Crusade. Stormcast Eternals from two hosts are present, the Hammers of Sigmar and the Hallowed Knights. The Hammers of Sigmar are the poster boys of the setting, the oldest and most well-rounded storm hosts, claiming access to the most advanced armories including Ballistas and Draconeth. The Hallowed Knights, by comparison, are the most zealous paladins of the Stormcast Eternals, praying day and night for strength from Sigmar. As a result, they are unbreakable and uncorruptible by the forces of Chaos, and are famous for their conquests in the realm of Gyron, particularly against the forces of Nurgle. Dwarden, or Dwarves, escaped into the realm of Heaven or Azure during the Age of Chaos, and are the finest artisans and miners in the realms. They pride themselves on making great weapons and machines, and manufacture them by the millions to energize the Crusades meant to take back their homes. The Free Guilds are the mortal warriors of the cities of Sigmar. Not everyone is handpicked by the God of Thunder for immortality, and even amongst the masses there are great heroes. They march forth in plate, wielding halberds, swords, and muskets to defend their homes from the dangers of the mortal realms and the forces of Chaos and Death. The Wood Elves and Sylvaneth are the most empowered in the realm of Gyron. The Wood Elves returned to the forest to reclaim their lost lands, while the Sylvaneth never left. They are the great tree spirits who fought chaos while the forces of order retreated to the realm of Azure, and it is only out of necessity that they welcome back the forces of order to help contain chaos. Which brings us to the forces of chaos. Beastmen corrupted by Nurgle spring forward to bring down the Dawnbringer Crusade, while Nurgle demons gut, gnaw, and rot the forces of order. Most powerful amongst them is a great unclean one, a manifestation of the god of decay made flesh. While we see the horrors of the battle, we're reminded that this is merely a distraction. The true game is sneaking in plague bearers into the city of Hammerhall itself to annihilate its population. Far from viewing this as spreading pain and misery, Nurgle sees the germination of his rot as a gift. He loves those who choose him and spares them the pain and misery of their inevitable decay. He uses them as vessels to spread his influence, not just to destroy, but also to seed new life out of entropy. Lord Thesis, one such supplicant, cares little for the great game, as it is merely a vehicle through which he can achieve vengeance against the Black Talon for slaughtering his village. He also wished to slaughter the forces of order for abandoning him to the gods of chaos. He wishes to bring them the great truth, that all order is a lie, leading unendingly into the maw of suffering. Lori sees the trap and tries to warn the Lord Commander Bastian Carthalos of the plot, but he trusts the Black Talons to finish the job while he brings war to the forces of Nurgle at his doorstep. We need to warn Hammerhall of what's coming! Too late for that. They know. The Crusade. Sigmar's light protect them now. Lorai? Where is the stronghold? Your Lord Commander would not listen. Then you should have tried harder! A crusade is under attack. The attack on the crusade is a distraction. Of course it's a distraction. This is, is here. It's a trap. For Neve. For you. He's... Here.
I know what you are. I know what you do. And I will tell you a truth. You are the final evidence of your god's hypocrisy. The suffering will not end for you, even if you pass through the storm. Immortality is not without its justice. This isn't just a cool episode featuring tons of well-animated violence, it's an indictment and commitment of every character. Lorai, a mercenary, easily could fade away from the battle, but Lord Thesis' challenge and the threat to the Black Talon forces her to the field. Rostus and Shikana's blind loyalty to the Black Talons is on the verge of getting them killed. Hendrik, while a valiant warrior, is a jailer for one of his peers and responsible for keeping the secret of Neve's origins from her. That she was a murderous champion of chaos, imbued with the power of Nurgle. She would simply walk away from the Stormcast and become a great champion of the Dark Powers. Lord Thesis is capable of ripping through the Black Talon's efforts and their lies easily, able to restrain and mock their attempts with just a few waves of his hand. What makes this episode metal isn't just the blood and pus of the main battle, but what Hendrik's death represents. While many of the deaths in the series have been brutal, Hendrik is restrained and a spiked root jammed through his neck and skull. Lord Thesis doesn't even view this as a harsh punishment compared to the torment on Hendrik's soul. That he is a jailer, a liar, a zealous servant to Sigmar, and ultimately a betrayer of Neve Black Talon. Hendrik will be doomed to thousands of fates like this, all while his soul is left in perpetual torment. No such release for you, not yet. You will languish here as the trees grow, and your city dies. idea of a hero who would fight to protect what she cared for. My sister was a fool. She thought that her strength could keep us safe. And she died for it. You defiled her memory with what you have done. Memories. You want them so very badly. But you're standing there, wrapped in a golden lie. The truth's always there. A shadow at your back.
we should go. This whole place looks like it's going to collapse into the ground. Kill the tree. And the fruit shall wither. Neve, help me. Who was she? I do not know who she was. But I know what she was. A soul who fought to protect those she cared for. A warrior. A hero. Anvil is waking. Empowered by Sigmar, leaps into action, gravely wounding Thesis in her very first stroke, and freeing the other Black Talons. Thesis laments Thea's death, revealing her to be his sister. He claims that Thea was foolish to believe she was strong enough to protect them from the cruelty of the world, and he caresses the meteor symbol of Sigmar. Thesis wishes to unravel the lie his sister told herself, that Sigmar cared for her and would protect her and her people. Neve is the embodiment of that lie, the former Chaos Champion that brought misery to so many. But Neve, ignorant of that history, presses on and with the help of her team brings down Thesis. I love this for a variety of reasons. For one, any weak link in the chain of this team and the forces of order would have lost. If the Lord Commander Bastion hadn't marched for the Crusade, those forces would have been destroyed. If Lori hadn't protected Shikana, Shikana would not have been able to make her wounding and distracting shots. If Rossus hadn't freed Neve, Neve would not have been able to take her empowered headshot. If Neve hadn't killed Thesis, then the battle for the Gates of Hammerhall may have been won, but the population inside would have been annihilated. Every character on the side of Order had to have faith and trust in each other in order to prevail. Hendrik wakes and is quick to lie to Neve that they were ambushed and she was killed by Nurgleite forces. Neve seems distrustful because she brought back a fragment of her memory knowing fully that she was never any of the champions she once dreamed about. For now she is content to accept that just like Thea, she is a soul who fights to protect those she cares for. Nightmares and a fanged shadow stalk her as she rests, meaning the fight is far from over, which brings us to the end for now. So if this is your first exposure to my channel, I strongly recommend going back and checking out the previous playlist for this entire series. I also recommend you check out the rest of the content. We got plenty in there for you. If you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you see whenever new content drops. Comment down below and feel free to fight it out in the comment section over lore and narrative interpretations. If you can't think of anything to say, then type in comment for the comment gods. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila, but I'll reply with an 07 in the comment section saluting you for your service. Become a YouTuber Patreon member to help support the channel and check out our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end. Special thanks to Taze Grove, Astronaut Farmer, The Real Birdman, Soren Axelson, The One Above All, Bud123, Fondue, Deus Halcyon, Vokes, Butters, Drizar, Lucifer the Doberman, Stephanie Luminous, Ken, Female Escort IRL, Tango Hotel, Mitchell Johnson, Sir Liamson, John, Hoofy, Leo Whitmer, Froggy Style, Adrian, Azrael, Cole G, Grassroots Hegemon, Christian Valeris, Name, Sir Fortesque, M. Penner, Weekend Jail, Exart Logan, and Jamaloo.